Well, everybody, welcome to Thrive. As always, incredibly excited to be here and honored to have yes. you. Uh, if you are, if you're here for the very first time, we want to welcome you to a place where we just really believe that there are three ways you can live your life, sinking, surviving, and thriving. But we believe God's best and God's will is for us not just to sink, not just for us to survive, but to thrive. John 10, 10, Jesus said, I came to give you life so that you can have it more abundantly or to the full. That's a thriving life where you're doing the best you can in the season you're in with the resources you have available. And part and parcel of thriving is not just God's principles, which we're about to get in it, mm -hmm. into in a minute, but prayer. Mm -hmm. there, are some, there are some situations that aren't fixed by teaching. We need a touch. Yes. Some situations aren't fixed by instruction. Mm -hmm. We need divine intervention. God's got to do it. Yeah. And so that's why we begin our time in Thrive with prayer. And so there's something that hit my heart today early, and I just want to share it with you. Here's a statement. The posture you pray from, from is just as important as the person you're praying to. Mm. So you're praying to God, yeah. right? But the posture you pray from is just as important as the person you're praying to. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? In Matthew chapter seven, Jesus makes his famous statement, asking it shall be given, um, seeking you'll find, knock, knock and the door. door shall be open. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't stop there. Mm -hmm. He goes down in verse um, 11 and says, if you being evil, know how to give good the gifts gift. to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Mm -hmm. And he, he, he's saying that on the heels of this statement where he, met, he says, hey, it, he say, what man, if your son asks you for bread, you'll give him a stone. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so what he's doing is he's appealing. I want you to catch this. He's appealing not just to the person they're praying to. He's not just talking about the person they're praying to. He's appealing to the posture they pray from. He's like, you have to pray from a posture where you're clear on the nature of God. Mm -hmm. notice, notice, the, notice the distinction. Mm -hmm. He says, if you being evil, know how to get gifts to drink. <laughs> yeah. How much more will your heavenly father? Yeah. So he's saying you, your prayer posture mm -hmm. needs to be rooted in a revelation of the nature of God. You pray differently uh, when you clear on his nature. He is good. good. You being evil, he's hey. not, he's good. He's good. And he's generous. Mm -hmm. Which father, if your son asks you for bread, you're giving him a rock. Mm -hmm. He says, so how much more will your father in heaven give good things to those who yeah. ask? He's a good God yep. who wants to give good things. Uh, I'm going to say that again. He's a good, good God, God that wants to give, give good things. things. So we, we're not praying today from a posture of begging mm -hmm. or pleading. Mm -hmm. We're praying boldly with a conviction mm -hmm. about his nature. Mm -hmm. He's a good God a good who God. wants to give, give good things good. to his people. And so we pray from that posture today. Um, and we're praying today for Brianna Hill for wisdom and guidance. We're praying for Doris Mangalu for favorable employment, who's seeking a career change. Yeah. We're praying for Elizabeth Lewis, who's believing for physical healing. We're praying for Aaron Emmanuel, who's praying for deliverance. And we're praying for uh, Kina Musiah, who is our, our exploring an educational endeavor in medical school. Yeah. And we're praying for Sean Daly, who is praying for financial provision. And we know we serve a God who can supply all of our needs. That's right. So whatever your need is right now, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're watching this live or you're watching this later. Uh -huh. Whatever your need is right now, we want you to pray, not just listen to us pray, pray with us. Release yeah. your faith for what you need God to do. Because there is a scripture that clearly communicates mm -hmm. that when I'm praying and doubting, I shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Right. So I know you may have prayed already, but maybe your faith is stirred now mm -hmm. in a way that it hadn't been stirred before. You need to pray for that thing again yes. with a heart filled with faith. So Father, yes. we just lift up to you yes. every single request represented yes, um, in the chat right now, yes, every single Lord. request that is on people's hearts yes. and every single request even that we lifted up before you. Yes, you Lord. told us to make our requests known unto you. Mm -hmm. We do that today. And I pray, great God, that you mm -hmm. are, that you show yourself strong on behalf of your people, yes, that you Lord. would bless yes. with guidance and wisdom and yes, favor Lord. and comfort and courage mm -hmm. and healing mm -hmm. and provision yes, and perspective. Yes, I thank you thank that you are a good God that wants to give good yes. things to your people. Yes. So bless us Hallelujah. exceedingly and abundantly Hallelujah. above all we ask or think. We receive it. Yes, God. And we receive it in Jesus' name. 
amen, amen. and amen. I felt that. Yeah, drop I some fire that. in the chat. I felt and so that. The, the posture you pray from yes. is just as important as the person you're you praying, praying to. to. And I must pray from a posture that is rooted in a revelation mm. of the nature of God. Mm. He his his mm. nature is faithfulness. Mm. So he can't help but be faithful. Lord. <laughs> so I pray differently mm -hmm. when I know he's a faithful God. And Pastor, you said that, and I was just thinking about not mm. only should we pray from the posture of faith, but I think we should pray from the posture of assurance. Mm -hmm. He's a good God, mm -hmm. want to give good things to his people. Yeah. So there's an assurance there that God wants to give me hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yep. It's like the Hebrew boys. Mm -hmm. You need to have an assurance yeah. that he can. Uh-huh. Even if you're not sure yeah, he will. Yeah. Yep. Our yep. God is able to he, deliver us. But if not, he not. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't mean he's that, not able. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's and so we, we pray from that place. But grateful to have you to, today and really excited about our time together, man. And, and, and I'm excited about this opportunity to kind of connect around God's word, mm -hmm. you know. And um, what we believe is the Bible is the blueprint to our best yep. life. Yep. And so we explore books of the Bible at Thrive and we mm -hmm. extract principles from the Bible mm -hmm. and help you apply them to your life. It is really, it is really in a real sense, the gospel of the kingdom, mm -hmm. that there is a, the king's way. You can live life culture's way, church's way, or the king's way. King's way is not just right, it's better. better. And so we're going <laughs> to scriptures and say, hey, this is what the scripture says about life. And this is the way we can experience a life Jesus came to give you and I. Mm -hmm. And so we're in this series called It's About to Get Better. And um, man, real quick, speaking of better, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to give people a special opportunity and a special invite mm -hmm. to be a part of a community you and I do together yeah. called yeah. Bible U. Yeah. And it is, it is, I love this community because we believe life gets better when you get you better with the Bible. Yep. 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 <laughs> you can get better with, with the Bible mm -hmm. if you get better yeah. with, the, with Bible. the Bible. Yep. And uh, it's an incredible community where we say, hey, how can we take almost like Bible college level content? Um, my master's is from Princeton. Your master's is in divinity is from Duke. Mm -hmm. My doctorate of ministry is from Fuller. Your doctorate of ministry is from United. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so how can we take all of what we've learned in mm -hmm. like almost 20 years yep. of ministry and then put it in everyday language so that the everyday believer mm -hmm can get what they would not normally be able to get in church. Right. So they can get better with the Bible. It's really what we call in Bible U a gap ministry. Mm -hmm. If you're part of Bible U, you mm -hmm. know what that is. So they're putting that information on the screen just so that you can leap into, into that or, or check it out if you feel like it may be something that, that's a blessing to you. But also we're really excited because we got Easter it's coming Easter up. Coming up, yes. And um, I know <laughs> We got people literally <laughs> uh, in different places of the country, but Easter of Change is gonna be incredible. Uh, New Jersey, mm -hmm. we've got a Saturday service at noon mm -hmm. on the 30th. Mm -hmm. So I'll be at the Ewing location live, preaching there live. So if you're in the Tri-State area, you're like, hey, PD's gonna be there live. Pull up. You can pull up on us at 12 noon. Then we've got our Sunday services there. Ewing's at 1030, West Hampton's growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. So they've got a nine and an 1130 on, on Easter. And so we're excited about that. So if you're in the tri-state area, you can pull up on us in New Jersey. And if you are in anywhere close to Georgia, we're telling you to get to Atlanta, get to the Gas South <laughs> Arena. Get here. Get to the Gas South Arena. At 1130 mm -hmm. on March 31st, Easter or Resurrection Sunday morning, it's going to be incredible. We got room. We got room. <laughs> Come on. Pull up. We got room. We got and Change you. Global, we got you covered at the 1130 service. We're going to be streaming from the arena. So, man, keep that in mind. But let's leap into our lesson, man. I'm excited about it. Um, we're in the book of Hebrews, and today we're going to be exploring chapters 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk from the subject, Principles for the Progress. progress. Hmm. principles for progress and um we're we're in this series entitled it's about to get better mm -hmm. and our argument pastor is the scriptures are the blueprint to better mm -hmm. that's it that if i that if i want to get better i gotta follow the blueprint, follow the blueprint. it's the map mm -hmm. it is the map that gives us the direction that we need to get to the destiny god has for us mm -hmm. and so the scriptures are a well Filled with riches that, if applied correctly, yes. accelerates right. certain areas of our lives. And uh, when I say a well filled with riches, I mean riches not in the sense of resources, mm -hmm. 
The Bible is resourceful, but I'm not talking about resources. I'm talking about the richness in the Bible right. is the wisdom right. you can get from it. And, um, and I think it was Proverbs that says, mm -hmm. wisdom is the principal thing. Yeah. It's the foundational thing. Yeah, it's the foundation, yeah. Solomon says, it, though it costs you all you have, yeah. God Almighty, get, get, wisdom. get wisdom. Get wisdom. That whatever you exchange for wisdom mm -hmm. means you're exchanging an inferior thing for a superior <laughs> thing. <laughs> Hi, yeah, yeah. And, and I heard somebody, they describe wisdom, and wisdom is, you know, it's, it's different from knowledge. Wisdom is mm -hmm. not knowledge, but wisdom is how to write your plot now. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, That's how, right. It's how yeah. to write your plot now. Yeah. I love it. it. It is the proper discernment. Right. Yeah. Of, of what knowledge should, should be applied be. Uh -huh. and the ability <laughs> to apply that knowledge uh -huh. appropriately. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. And Jesus talks about that in Matthew chapter mm -hmm. number seven, mm -hmm. verse 24. Mm -hmm. He says like, hey, there, there are two men yep. who build their houses right. and the houses are a metaphor for life. Mm -hmm. He say one builds on sand, yes. mm -hmm. the other builds on a rock. Yep. And it says <laughs> they both look the same. Until a storm, storm comes. Come. Yep. God <laughs> Almighty. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and when the storm, storm comes, uh -huh. one is still standing and the other is destroyed Ooh. and dilapidated. Because, watch this, dilapidated. Because there are, uh, there are people who feel like mm -hmm. they're living life with cultural wisdom mm. and they feel like they're doing just as well as people that are living with the king's wisdom. Because their houses look the same. Mm. But the evidence of what your house is built Build on, on. Yes, isn't revealed until a storm. Until a storm. Until the, storm. <laughs> <laughs> the sand represents cultural, shifting. social, worldly wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's shifting. It's shifting. It changes. <laughs> one day this is in, one day that's in, yep. right? Come yep. on, right? It's, yep. it's, yep. Like, yep. it's like every time you turn around, it's something new we need to yeah, do, right? But, but then you've got that which is built on the rock, rock. which is God's work. It's the creator's design. Mm -hmm. It's the architects of the universe's blueprint. Mm -hmm. And he said, when the storm comes, that one mm -hmm. was still standing. And Pastor, when we talk about this word, I, I kind of want to just kind of also just, just kind of talk about how it's not just hearing the word. Mm. You know, acceleration will never take place without application. That's right. Implementation That's and right. execution. That's right. And um and, and James says that don't only be only don't 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 only be hearers of the word, but be ye also doers. That's right. And it's possible, man, to to decide that the word is right and not actually do it. <laughs> of course. You know. Yes. And and I and I was I was reading this book and it was talking about the law of diminishing hmm. Uh, intent, mm. and it said, the longer you wait to do something you should do now, mm. the greater the odds that you never actually do it. Gosh. And some of us, we read this word and mm. we decide it's right, we mm. decide it's the best mm. course for our life, mm. but we never actually take that next step and do it. Mm. So there's a difference between deciding and doing. Mm. Now watch this, as you're talking, as you, this is powerful. This is powerful. Mm. Because um, I was just reading this scripture, I think it's in Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not going to be able to quote it verbatim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes me longer to memorize stuff than, <laughs> yeah, than I used to. Yeah. Well, I was 19, I could read it one time and then quote it got right it, back it. to you. Got it. Now, no, I, gotta, I got to wait a minute. Got it right I got to write it. Sometimes I'll I be, I be about to say something and forget what yeah, I'm, I'm about to, to say. I can be me and and say, what was I talking <laughs> no, about? No. Now, I don't even try to play it off anymore when I'm preaching. If I get lost, I'm going to just ask, what was I talking about? I'm going to ask. What was I Help me out. What's, what's the point I'm trying to make? I, I don't know. You're making the point. Uh, but what was I about to say? I forgot. What, what was we I about to say? About, uh, Scripture. Ecclesiastes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Here it is. <laughs> Ecclesiastes. The, Solomon says something like, he who regards the wind or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. will never sow. Will never sow. Right. Like, and, and, and he who regards the rain will never mm -hmm. reap. Something yeah. along those lines. Yep. It's like that many people are waiting for certain external Ex yeah. conditions uh -huh. to change before they mm -hmm. make a change. Right. Not realizing that some things don't change <laughs> until you change. Now, I, w I want somebody to put this in the chat because we got to do better about, and we're getting ready to talk about this yeah. in just a second, the principle of profession. Mm -hmm. So we got to do better at this 
meaning we got to do better at encouraging you to do this. And somebody put in the chat right now, it's about to change. It's about to change. Come on, make that, make that affirmation, change. that declaration. It's about, it's about to, to change. change. Why? Not because I have control over it, mm -hmm. but I don't need to have control over it for it to change. I need to have control over me. I need to have dominion over me. And God has given me the ability to watch this, to submit myself to his leadership, to lead and guide, mm -hmm. to be led and guided by him. And when when I change, mm. some things have, have to, to change. change. They have to change. Good God Almighty they is getting to change. ready to change. To change. Mm. But that's 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 so important. Mm -hmm. Because that's what wisdom actually is, right? Mm -hmm. And I love this because here's, here's what the Bible says. This wisdom is wisdom, I want you to catch this, that God has hidden mm. for his people. Yes. Not from Before. his people, Before. For his but for his people. Yeah. Pastor, where you get this? Okay, so the wisdom we're supposed to be building our life on mm -hmm. is contained in scriptures. Yep. It's not just cultural. It's not just a social phenomenon. It's mm -hmm. not just a, a social trend. Mm -hmm. it, it's found in scripture. scripture. It's not hidden from okay. me. It's hidden for me. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 10, it says, the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge mm -hmm. of the secrets mm -hmm. of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. <laughs> God Almighty. This is good. Yeah. I love it. He says there are some, there, there, there is, I want you to catch this. There are some secrets. There are some principles. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. that, that, that are paths to God's promises. Jesus said that have been hidden <laughs> for us. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. from us, but for us. My God. And what the enemy wants to do mm. is to keep things that are hidden for us. Mm. From mm. us. But somebody put in the chat, not today, not Satan. Today, not today. And and God loves us so much. God, he says it's hidden off uh for us, not from us. And what God does is he hides it in plain sight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, he mm -hmm. hides he hides it in a way mm -hmm. that he wants us to find it. It's it's in plain sight. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I I think this is why. Avenues like Thrive are mm -hmm. so important mm -hmm. because what are we doing? We're shining a light on. Mm. That's all we're doing. Mm. We're shining a light on yeah. Yeah. what has already mm -hmm. been available and mm -hmm. present, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. that, that many have been unaware of and blind to. Right. That's what we're doing, right. shining the light. Shining the light. On this, on these wisdom and these principles, and so that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna explore in our time together today. We want to expose some principles uh, in the pages of Hebrews that are principles to progress. <laughs> principles to progress. Stuck should be a season, not, not a state. state. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. stuck is a state, or when stuck is a cycle, Ooh. there is a principle that is being ignored mm -hmm. or not applied correctly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that one more time. Mm -hmm. That when stuck is a state or stuck is a cycle, mm -hmm. there's a principle somewhere that's being ignored or not applied correctly. Mm -hmm. That's good, Pastor. That's good, that's good. And so when it comes to progress, mm -hmm. there are some principles in Hebrews that we need to lift up in our time together, Pastor, and, and, and chapters 9 and 10 contain three key ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could have pulled about seven yeah, or eight, a lot of but we, we would never finish. <laughs> so we pulled three catalytic ones. Here it is. Number one, I love this one, Pastor. The principle of presence. Lord. <laughs> if you're going to progress, you must understand the principle of presence. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9 one says this, now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. Mm. A tabernacle was set up. Uh -huh. In the first room was a lampstand and the table with its consecrated bread. Mm. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room mm. called the most holy, holy place, place. Uh -huh. which had the golden altar of incense and the gold covered ark of the covenant. This ark, we're getting ready to go somewhere here, contained 
the gold jar of manna, Aaron stabbed that buddy, mm -hmm. the tones of the tablet, the stone tablets of the covenant, mm -hmm. and above the ark were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the atonement cover. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now. Mm -hmm. Okay, principle of his presence. You know, there's a lot of conversation uh -huh. in church settings about get into the presence Principal. of God. Mm -hmm. The importance of the spiritual discipline of worship uh -huh. gives you access to a presence, right. to his presence. Right. The importance of the spiritual discipline of prayer, mm -hmm. it leads you into his presence. Solitude and stillness mm -hmm. and silence, sitting in his presence. So there's a lot of conversation about his presence, mm -hmm. right? But when you understand the principle of presence, mm -hmm. you understand why, not just the what, the what the why. but the why. Ooh. So when I, when I get in his presence, mm -hmm. Which the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence, presence of God. the presence of God. There were three things mm -hmm. in the Ark. Mm -hmm. And the things that were in the Ark are in his presence. And just because I'm in a church uh -huh. doesn't mean I'm in his presence. Uh -huh. And just because I'm in a worship service <laughs> doesn't mean I'm in his presence. These three things that are, in, four things that are in the Ark are only things that are in his presence. It's not necessarily in a church. It's not necessarily in a worship service. It's in his presence. It's in his presence. It's in his presence. And if I don't get in his presence, right. I can't get these, I four, can't things. Get these four things. Who, Pastor? Let me, let me, let me just, man. Let, jump let me in here. Let me, let me just jump in here. Uh, one of the things I, I think this teaches us, and Psalms 100 teaches us, is this: that God's presence is password protected. Like anything valuable, <laughs> anything you know. That, 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 yes. that is important. Yeah. You put a password and yeah. passwords are designed to keep the wrong people from gaining access. And Psalms 100 say, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So thanksgiving, praise mm -hmm. and gratitude mm -hmm. are passwords to his presence. A hundred percent. Right. Yes, it's sir. It's password protected. You just, can't, you just can't enter That's any it. kind of way. That's it. You can't access it any kind of way. Anyone that gives access indiscriminately is a person <laughs> without standards. Come on, I love it. Anybody, I say it again. Anybody it again. who just gives anybody access to them without standards is an individual that has an identity issue. Ooh. They do not know their worth. They do not know their value. Ooh. Therefore, they set no standards. Love is freely given. Uh -huh. Access is earned. Hey, this is some relationship one-on-one -on -one <laughs> stuff right here, Doc. This is some relationship one-on-one -on -one uncensored stuff Good right here. God Anybody who gives access without standards. Yeah. My it's, God. This is an individual who is unaware of their identity. Woo! They're suffering with an identity issue. Mm. Pastor, I, I want to ask a question then. <laughs> who have you given access to that shouldn't have? No, nah, we just, just think about it. Let it marinate. <laughs> let it breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, it, breathe. let it breathe. <laughs> yeah. This is, I, I, and I really, people, people confuse, I think, love with access. Yeah, they, I love and it is man. not the same thing. It's not the same. Yeah. Love. So even if you look at God, God doesn't just give love. He is love. Mm -hmm. He is the embodiment, the essence of love. Mm -hmm. It is his nature. So mm -hmm. it's not just what he gives, it's who it he is, is right. who he is, right? Right. right? Yet at the same time, he loves everyone, but he doesn't give access in terms of manifest presence indiscriminately. Omnipresence, he's everywhere at the same, same time. time. Mm -hmm. That is different from mm -hmm. manifest, manifest presence. presence. Manifest presence has criteria. <laughs> if I'm going to show up, there has to be criteria that is met. Oh my God. Yeah. And so if God is that way, uh -huh. and we are made in his image and likeness, why do we think we should be operating mm -hmm. any other way? We can give love, but love does not mean indiscriminate access. Uh, even G I don't even have time. Nah, even I'm Jesus saying. didn't do that. But, but the point is, <laughs> we want access. We want access. Yeah. We want access. And, I, and I, wanna, I, wanna, I want us to walk through what is actually in the presence, what is mm -hmm. actually in the ark. Mm -hmm. Because I want this to be motivation mm -hmm. for people to actually utilize the passwords right. to gain access, access to his presence. Mm -hmm. So Change Church, mm -hmm. we have an amazing, we've been blessed mm -hmm. with an amazing Absolutely. group of Absolutely. worship leaders. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, and, and that's not arrogant, that's awareness. Mm -hmm. that's a, that, is, that is to say, 
God has chosen by his grace to give us something that we think is unique. Mm. And so we want to uniquely value right. what God has given us uniquely. Mm. But my private worship is better. <laughs> <laughs> the corporate worship is it's, it's, it's just amazing. It's great. Yeah. But my private worship is better. <laughs> so it's almost like trying to worship corporately mm -hmm. without uh, publicly, without worshiping Pri privately mm -hmm. is the equivalent of only showing PDA. Mm -hmm. Public <laughs> Public displays of affection, right? Uh -huh. Only only displaying PDA uh -huh. when you go out. Come on. My God. <laughs> it's awkward. It's awkward. Because we only do it when we out. Uh-huh. Bad. This is so much. Mm. And so what we're trying, what I'm trying to get us to wrap our head around is like, hey, we need to privately mm -hmm. learn. This is why, and we do this like. I don't even know if I should go here, but, but this, this is why the way corporate worship is done mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. We're not saying our way is the way. We're saying our way is the way God's called us to mm -hmm. do it based on our theology of worship. worship. Because what we want to do in the corporate the public setting is to create experience that awakens an appetite for people to worship privately. Because mm -hmm. your most transformative experiences are going to be... It's going to be private right, right. Mm -hmm. because you can do that every day, mm -hmm. not the 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes mm -hmm. that are allocated in a public service. So, but a lot of people prioritize prayer, mm -hmm. but minimize worship. And I think part of the reason is we hadn't taught them the principle of presence, of presence. Mm -hmm. because the benefit of being in his presence it's what's in his presence. <laughs> We're not telling you to get in his presence just to get in, in his, his presence. presence. We're telling you to get in his presence because of what's in the yes. presence. That's the principle of presence. Mm. The benefit of his presence is what's in his presence. Mm. Yes, we love his presence and his presence alone. Wow. But there is something else that comes with his presence mm. that makes getting in his presence well, worth it. it. Yep. And what's the first thing? Manna. The Bible says right here, the ark contained the gold jar of manna. Mm -hmm. What was manna? Provision. Bread from heaven. Provision. It was bread that fed. Come on. When they were in the wilderness, it was bread that fed, fell from heaven. Now, that manna, the Bible says, only lasted 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Except for on the day before the Sabbath, because they wouldn't work on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Then he would give them a double portion so they wouldn't have to pick up. Mm -hmm. But the... But, Every 24 hours, that manna would, see, would, would, would decay. Somehow, mm -hmm. there's a jar where the manna was maintained. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> it was sustained. Uh -huh. Come on here. Yes, Lord. Something that would have broke down, mm -hmm. fell apart, mm -hmm. been fragile and flimsy, mm -hmm. stayed together. Why? Right. Because it was in the ark. Lord have mercy. My God. I want y'all to catch this. <laughs> in his presence. In his presence. It was in his presence. In his presence. So, so th there, are some, there, are, there are some times where my faith uh -huh. feels weak and uh -huh. my joy feels weak, weak uh -huh. and my peace feels weak. And it feels like it's falling apart like manna. Mm -hmm. But when I get in his presence, I have provision mm -hmm. in the form of him sustaining, sustaining. me. Ooh. And the reason some people uh -huh. can't sustain mm -hmm. yeah, is because... You're not in the presence. It's because the man is in the presence. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I love this. And man. if the enemy can keep us out of the, the presence, presence, he can keep us away from the man. My God. My God. Lord. <laughs> My God. Because the miracle is in the presence. That's it. And this is, what, this is what I love. Sometimes the miracle is not God giving us more, but the miracle is God sustaining what we got. Mm -hmm. And God making sure what we have don't run out. Mm -hmm. It's called when God stretched what mm -hmm. we have. Like mm -hmm. he don't give me any more. And some of us have missed the miracle because we waiting for God to give us more. When God said you, you missed the fact that I've scratched what you had. Yes, that's it. And if you the oh, that's a word. 
That's a word. Mm. If you'll get in his presence, he'll stretch your strength. <laughs> if you'll get in his presence, in his he'll presence. stretch your joy. Hallelujah. If you get in his presence, he'll stretch your focus. Mm. If you get it, he did. There wasn't more manna uh -huh. in the ark. He just sustained. He just sustained. <laughs> The manner. And I want somebody that's honest enough to say you're in a season where you could be falling apart mm -hmm. right now. If that's you, everybody's mm -hmm. not in that season. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a season where you could be falling oh, apart, God. just put in the chat right now. He's keeping he's me. He's keeping me. Uh, <laughs> Good God. Lord man. is keeping me. He's, he's keeping me. Yes. He's keeping me like manna. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> just yes, the same Lord. way he kept the manna, he keeping my me. mind. Yeah. He's keeping my peace. Mm. He's keeping my joy yeah. he's keeping my focus and it's in the presence come on pastor some some you might as well go ahead and testify it should have fell apart yes. it should be falling apart and some of us are wondering after all we've been going through why yes. it hasn't fallen apart because god is keeping it yes god is keeping come it. on Man, now listen to this sometimes we run out uh -huh. quicker than we should because mm -hmm. we're not running in to, to the presence of god whoo so when I'm too busy for the presence, I'm too busy for manna. <laughs> Love. Come on. When I'm too busy for his spirit, uh -huh. I'm too busy to be sustained. Hey, and that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to he what well, God wants us to exchange an inferior thing, mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. for a superior thing, his presence. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants to reverse it yep. and cause us to exchange a superior thing. For inferior thing. I don't even have time to deal with that. No, sir. He says, in, instead of sacrifice, God wants us to sow time mm -hmm. to get the presence. <laughs> so he wants us to put time on the altar uh -huh. so we can get the presence. The enemy wants us so busy, uh -huh. he wants us to put the presence on the altar mm -hmm. so you can have time. Good God. God. Have mercy. Woo. Somebody put in the chat, I'm about to pause for the presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't care what I got going on. I'm about to pause for the presence. Pastor, this is why we teach here. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's a concept at Change we teach called the first 15. Mm -hmm. yep. And that is whenever your day starts, mm -hmm. at minimum, we say, hey, make it a practice to give God yeah, the first 15. Mm -hmm. So yep. some people work nights. So that means you get home, you go to sleep, you wake up in the afternoon. Yep. First 15. Yep. Like, to, you, you know, to say, all right, hey. I'm gonna wake up 15 minutes earlier than I normally would. Some of some people are past that. Mm -hmm. they're, at a, they're in a season of life or a season of their spiritual journey where they're past that. Mm -hmm. But the compound effect, a little bit done faithfully over time yields exponential results. So you'll get more doing a little bit consistently mm -hmm. than you will doing a lot inconsistently. Mm -hmm. And so, but included in the first 15 mm -hmm. is not just prayer, mm -hmm. it's worship. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go so far as, this is what Charles Spurgeon says. Mm -hmm. If you have an hour to pray, mm -hmm. you should spend, listen to what Spurgeon says. Yep. Spurgeon says, if you've got an hour to pray, you should spend 50 minutes worshiping. <laughs> now, he's not saying legal, that legalistically. Uh -huh. He's saying that metaphorically, mm -hmm. that, that when you get in the presence, That's even your prayers change. <laughs> so Ian Bounds calls this prayerless Praying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like when I'm just praying and there's no presence, mm -hmm. it's prayerless praying. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Matthew calls it in the book of Matthew, vain repetitions. Repetition. Yeah. Vain babbling. Yeah. Vain repetition. It's like, man, I, I need to I need to come into his presence before I talk to him. Mm -hmm. So manna. Uh, this this is all we're gonna get to, because to, to, we got three more points on point one, and then we got we got some others we'll get to next week. All right, so manna, mm. that's provision, that's in the presence. That's not only the only thing the text says. This it says Aaron's staff that budded. Mm -hmm. Now, just in case someone's unfamiliar mm -hmm. with this story, mm -hmm. I want to read a significant part of this in number seventeen. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and get 12 staffs from them, one from the leader of each of their ancestral tribes. Write the name of each man on the staff. On the staff of Levi, write Aaron's name, for there must be one staff for the head of each ancestral tribe. Mm -hmm. Place them in the tent of meeting in front of the Ark of the Covenant, where I will meet with you. Mm -hmm. The staff belonging 
to the man I choose will sprout. Mm -hmm. And I will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. So Moses spoke to the Israelites. The leaders gave him 12 staffs, one for the leader of the ancestral tribes, and Aaron's staff was among them. Moses placed the staffs before the Lord in the tent of the covenant law. The next day, mm -hmm. Moses entered the tent. He saw Aaron's staff, which represented the tribe of Levi, had not only sprouted, but it had budded. And it had blossomed and produced almonds. Then Moses brought out all the staffs from the Lord's presence to all the Israelites. They looked at them and each of the leaders took his own staff. So there were people that were upset mm -hmm. that Aaron had been appointed <laughs> to the role. he. Y'all aren't talking to Come me. That, that, that he had been appointed to the role he had been assigned to. Mm -hmm. And they were grumbling mm -hmm. about, they were grumbling about Moses' leadership and grumbling mm -hmm. about Aaron's leadership. Uh -huh. and why aren't we leading things of that nature? It represents people who have a problem with your positioning. Mm. Mm. Ah. Did you hear what, what I just say? said? It represents <laughs> people mm -hmm. who feel like you hadn't earned that appointment. Mm. <laughs> people who are sick uh -huh. because you're in a certain seat. <laughs> so they're grumbling uh -huh. and they're upset. Uh -huh. So God said, Moses, I'm going to fix this. And this is the way I want you to fix it. I want you out of 12 tribes, get, get staffs, have the leaders write their name on it. We're going to put all of them in front of the presence. And then when we put all of them <laughs> in front of the presence, the one I pick, good God Almighty, is the one that's going to bloom and blossom. And the Bible says that was Aaron's. Mm -hmm. So inside the ark was the jar of manna, but it was also that rod. Mm -hmm. And this represents confirmation and affirmation. There's some confirmation you're looking for, but here's my question. Mm -hmm. Have you went to the place yes. to get it? Have you went to the presence? Y'all aren't talking to oh me. God. Many of us, watch this. Uh -huh. I want you to think about this. Uh -huh. Let's say if somebody on our team needs an answer from mm -hmm. me. <laughs> I want to really show you uh -huh. in the natural what happens in the spiritual. Uh -huh. Let's say somebody on my team needs an answer from mm -hmm. me. They come into my office mm -hmm. and say, PD, um, I need to know such, 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 such. Mm -hmm. And then they turn around and leave. Mm -hmm. And then go about their day <laughs> upset at me because I didn't give them an answer. You asked and then you left. Mm -hmm. You didn't wait on one. This is what many people do in prayer. Yep. Yep. We roll out a list and then walk Wake out. Up. It's like God didn't give me direction. You, you didn't, didn't wait for you any. Didn't, you didn't wait on it. You didn't wait on it. Now come on now. Come on here. Come on here. You come to you come to thrive mm -hmm. because you want to thrive. Mm -hmm. Come on. And to thrive, you got to be taught. Yeah. You got to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And there are things that have to be adjusted, but they can't be adjusted until they're exposed. Right. And many people are literally having drive-by conversations with God. They're monologues. They're calling them dialogues. Yeah. Yep. 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 You know what? I think sometimes God be like, when are you going to be quiet so I can say something? That's why we need the presence. This is why we need the presence. We're going to have to talk about this. We're going to have to talk about what Brother Lawrence, that, mm -hmm. uh, that um, monastic church father, mm -hmm. called practicing the presence yes. of God. Yep. Yep. Because what, here's the issue. Mm. Here's the issue. And this is, this is and I love, I love the way we do this at our church. Mm -hmm. And that is create, and we've trained them to do this, create space for people to sit with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he's going to speak in our silence. I can take you to, to where scripture says he spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. Mm -hmm. He don't scream. Mm -hmm. So he won't scream over yours. <laughs> hey, this, you understand he, what I'm saying? He He's not going to scream over, over your screams. Your screams. <laughs> the Lord is in his holy temple. Let now all the earth, earth keep silent, silent before, before him. him. So there's this. And I think this is where the spiritual disciplines of, spirit, uh, of solitude and stillness mm -hmm. become so important mm -hmm. because we must learn to sit with God. And when you sit with him, that's when answers that you're looking for start coming. 
They don't come in the song. Mm. The song is us expressing worth to him. That's important. We sing to him. We talk to him. But when you sit in his presence, now you create space for him to talk to you. And if all we're doing is, see, I, I don't have time. Worship is not just singing. Singing is an expression of worship. My God. My God. I can I cannot say a word. Y'all better come get me today mm. and lift my hands and my hands are talking. Mm. My I cannot say a word and I can dance. And, my, and for everyone who thinks that, that, that dancing is just always hyper emotionalism and out of order, the scriptures say praise him the in the dance. <laughs> so we believe uh -huh. that the totality mm -hmm. of our being mm -hmm. should be engaged mm -hmm. in the worship of God. I use my mouth, but not only my mouth. Mm -hmm. I use my hands. And when I put them together, I'm praising him. Yes. And when I leap, huh? I'm praising him. <laughs> when I kneel, yeah, I'm worshiping him. On. If I lay prostrate, I'm, I'm worshiping him. Now, we taught in spiritual temperaments, everybody doesn't have to do everything, but mm -hmm. all of that's in the Bible so yeah. that there's something for everybody. My God. Mm. But some of the affirmation, we got to go, and some of the confirmation we looking for is it's in it's in the stillness. It's in the stillness of God. Sitting with the Father. Getting in his presence. Pastor, I have to do it multiple times a day. Oh yeah. Just pause. I have to multiple times a day. Morning and my devotion in the afternoon, day, the daily office. Pause, give me a minute to be with him. Now, in the morning, I'm doing most of the talking. Mm -hmm. In the afternoon, it's solitude and stillness. Yeah. He's doing the talking. Pastor, this uh, Richard J. Foster, he, he made a quote that I think is, is very uh, pertinent to this teaching presentation when he says that our app adversary majors in three things. Good gosh. Noise, hurry, Business. and crowds. Mm. If he can keep us engaged in muchness and manyness, he will rest well satisfied. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a link to that book in, the, uh, in my description. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about Foster's um, yeah. was the spirit of the disciplines? I think, I think so. What is that? Let me, I think so. Uh, I want to get that right, right title, but we're going to put the exact one in a link so that you guys can um, go get that book. It was, it, it, revo it revolutionized uh, um, my life. Willard might be the spirit of the disciplines, uh, but Foster, I learned solitude, mm -hmm. stillness, and biblical meditation from Foster. Foster. He framed it in a way um, that, that revolutionized my life. Um, so the rod was in the presence and then the stone tablets were in the presence, which represents a word from God. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in the presence, I not only get confirmation and affirmation, I get instruction. Mm -hmm. Like, and there, I don't even have time to talk about this, but Sunday I talked about three Greek words we see in the New Testament describing the word of God, logos, mm -hmm. which is John one. Mm -hmm. And then we got graphe or graphi, which um, is in first Timothy talking about the scriptures, the, the written word, the Bible. Mm -hmm. But then there's one in Ephesians six, I believe. And it is called rhema. rhema. Yeah. That is a divine utterance. Yes. That is when God takes a timeless truth yeah. and then delivers it in a timely manner. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the graphi, Written scripture says, bear you one another's burdens, but each one bears his own load. So which one, which one do I apply? Mm -hmm. That's the graphite. Mm -hmm. I need to bear mm -hmm. burdens, but then sometimes I need to let somebody bear their own load. Mm -hmm. Which one do I do? Mm -hmm. I need a rhema. Mm -hmm. The rhema shows me which one of those to apply. I only get that in the presence. In the presence. And so this principle is a principle for progress.
because sometimes we can't progress because we're not sustained. We don't have manna, so we keep running out. We don't have confirmation. So we're moving forward timidly or we're not moving forward at all because mm. I don't have confirmation on what I'm, I don't have affirmation. And then there are times we got paralysis mm -hmm. because we don't have instruction. Right. We don't have a rhema. It's like, Pastor, I've read this. I need to know what to do. I need a rhema. I need a word. Right now, word. I need a timeless truth presented in a timely Time manner <laughs> that only comes from time in his presence. Mm -hmm. Creating space where I'm going to say, I'm going to exchange an inferior thing, time, for a superior thing. thing. And so when you get accustomed to this, It no longer becomes duty, it becomes delight. <laughs> I'm just telling you, now your time in his presence becomes a response mm -hmm. to a longing in your soul. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a duty you have to perform. It's an aching in your soul that is only addressed mm -hmm. by the presence of God. And that's what Augustine meant when he said there's a void in our soul that can mm -hmm. only be filled by God. Yeah. There's a God-sized void yeah. that can only be filled by God. Yeah. And that's and it is only filled in his presence. Yeah. I want to tell y'all something. We gotta go. Every idea that I've ever it's received that is worth mentioning mm -hmm. has not been a good idea, it's been a God one. Mm -hmm. It's been like these epiphanies. Mm -hmm. It's these you know, you know, he speaks to me a lot too. Like, even when I'm just like away, when I'm when I'm out of crowds, mm -hmm. when I'm out of muchness, as Foster says, yeah. and busyness. Yeah. Just sometimes in the most random moments, solutions to problems I've been wrestling with for seasons can come to me in a moment. Yeah. The presence. Because the the tablets mm -hmm. of stone, the message is in the ark. And we're standing outside the ark saying, Lord, bring the manna to me, bring the rod to me, bring the tablets of stone to me. And God's like, no, you only get the manna and the rod and the stones when you get in the ark. When we get in the ark, get in the presence. When we get in the presence. So we want to encourage you to do this, just that. I believe God's going to bless and, and honor this in a powerful way. We got two more points we're going to have to get to next week. Uh, good points too. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking at good. point two. It's got three points to yeah, it. It's no good too. Oh man. <laughs> but man, we're we're believing. We're believing for mm. for just something significantly to shift in our spiritual life as adults of our time together. I wanna we wanna prepare to go. We wanna pray over you Ooh. and I want you to receive this this prayer because we've taught this truth universally universally to you. But God has to show you how to put this into practice for you in the season of life you in. Some of you, you might be a single parent with young kids. How you flesh this out is gonna be way different than someone who's an empty nester and retired. So you, you've got to figure out, some of you are caring for young kids, some of you are caring for elderly parents. Some of you are not working at all, some of you are working three jobs. You have to figure, God's got to show you how to take what we've just taught and apply it to your life. That's not gonna come from us, it's gonna come from him because that keeps you dependent on him and not on us. I am your teacher, I'm not your God. And so God's got to help you apply this for you. And so I wanna pray that God gives you the wisdom to, to do that. As we do each time before we close out, we create space for people to worship through giving. giving yeah. And that's what giving is. It is worship. It is saying to God, you matter to me more than this. <laughs> that's what it says. Yes. It, 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 it is saying mm -hmm. that you do for me what this can't. It is saying, I so value you that I will give you the thing that other people value the most because I know it's not this that's taking care of me. It's you. So Lord, I give you an 
offering. I offer this to you. Not, not as a dead I owe, but as a seed I sow. So Lothar is coming up on ways to give. You're helping us make a difference all over the world. So let's pray. Father, I uh, thank you for thank you, your Holy Spirit being you, our shepherd and our leader. I pray that you would lead us on how to practice your presence, how to do more than sing songs, how to do more than listen to praise and worship, but how to create an atmosphere of silence and stillness where we sit with you. For we know in your presence, there's fullness of joy. Manna's there, sustain me. The rod is there, confirmation and affirmation. And the tablets of stone is there. Message, divine instruction, our rhema word is in your presence. So Lord, help us apply this to the appropriate areas of our life. In Jesus' name, name. amen. Amen. Love you, family. See you next week. Take care. Well, listen, thank you for watching Thrive. I want you to make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of our teachings. And remember, you can watch me live at Thrive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard.